What's going on everybody? So today's video is about Vaxart. Vaxart uh, is a company that I've already done a video on, but that video contains some information that's no longer correct. Uh, things change quickly, so this video is going to contain everything from that video plus what's new to get you up to date and keep the information correct. So they have had 85 million shares and they sold when the stock went to another level, 12,500,000. And it's now combined for a 107,300,000 after everything is the total amount of shares that is out there that makes up the, the company's market cap. So that plays an effect as far as us thinking about where the stock could go share price wise based on the market cap. Uh, you know, we talked about how, you know, if we got to a billion, two billion, three billion, four billion, whatever it might be. And you can figure out what the shares of a company would be quite easily. Um, if you take the value that you want the company to be and you divide it by the uh, amount of shares. So if you have a, a billion dollar market cap and you have a 107,300,000 shares and you divide the two of them together, it turns out to be $9.31 is a $1 billion market cap for that many shares. So when Vaxar gets to 931, it would be worth a billion dollars. Well, it's already there. So, uh, but that's a big difference from 17, like it was previously thought to be. So, uh, you know, and we've talked about, you know, them being worth maybe two, four, a lot of these smaller biotech companies have gone to about that range. Some have gone to six. So obviously we want to stick to what's, you know, uh, you know, conservative. So that two to $4 billion range. So the $2 mark would put it at $18.62. So not that much higher than what we're at right now. Uh, and then a $4 billion would put it at $37.24. So obviously uh, still a good gain, still double from here, of course, but, uh, you know, not that uh, $50, $60 level that we were thinking before. That doesn't mean that it couldn't get to the $50, $60 level because it easily could by, by you know, having good results and that type of thing. But, you know, we want to, you know, not be, um, you know, too, too optimistic as far as, you know, what we think is going to happen, which you know, versus what's realistic. So, you know, the, the, the stock getting, you know, to 20, I think right now, if you go to a CNN money forecast and you put in Vexart, I believe the top analyst right now has a, um, a $22 price target on there. So, you know, I, I definitely think it could get up there. So let's get into the information that we've already covered a little bit, just so anybody that's new that's watching it uh, is up to date. Vaxart is making a COVID-19 uh, vaccine, and they are making an oral vaccine, which is unique because it's not an injectable, it's an oral. And there's multiple things that they think is good about that, um, one of which is, is that if you, they say, and they have proven science, according to them, that if you ingest it, it is absolutely easier to get into the mucus and into the glands so as there's a first line of protection uh, in the mucus which covers you know, your mouth your eyes your nose as far as you know having that first line of defense against inhaling a virus uh, particularly COVID-19 and so the other thing that obviously it being a pill form is logistical purposes uh, you know you can uh, mail it in you can mail it to people that don't want to get out elderly people um, there's people that may not want to take an injectable vaccine but they're more willing to take an oral vaccine and then another thing that has changed recently that's coming to light with a lot of these uh, vaccine companies right now is that um, they think that there's not going to be that much of a response with just a one dose vaccine shot and they think that it's going to require two so that's that's new that's happened in, uh, this week and so that's kind of the, the new thing and they're thinking that people aren't going to be that uh, cautious when they get the first vaccine to still be cautious until they get the second dose so that's actually kind of provoked a, uh, provided a little bit of a worrying factor for a lot of people that are out there as far as getting this vaccine if they need that too well if Vaxart and they haven't said this but if it's an oral vaccine and if they think it's a one-time deal great but if they say no you'd be better off with having double the dosage because it seems like there's not a problem with just taking more um, as long as the dose isn't too high, doesn't mean you can't take more of the same. So, you know, they could easily say, okay, hey, this is your regimen, take this, and then, you know, seven days later, whatever it is, you know, you take your second dose. You go to the doctors one time, if that, to even get it, if they don't mail it to you, uh, and you're done. So, I mean, it's got a little bit of an edge all around 
uh, compared to the other ones, except for the fact that obviously, you know, they are behind as far as, you know, the top three, um, you know, as far as Moderna, Pfizer, uh, and a couple others, uh, was AstraZeneca, that's uh, really getting in front of uh, having the vaccines ready by the end of the year. So, uh, like, uh, like we know, the, uh, the, the Operation Warp Speed has, uh, they came out and they, they've picked five vaccines by the, the major companies, and they said that we're gonna go with these five. And so, uh, you know, that, that's been kind of like the, the go-to, although those five vaccines are made up of, of multiple companies like Pfizer and BioNTech is consisting of one vaccine. Uh, so, and I think like AstraZeneca is actually, can, uh, I think there's three involved with AstraZeneca. Uh, Oxford Biomedica is, is another one that, that's with AstraZeneca. So one of the things that's unique as well about Vaxart is that uh, Operation Warp Speed came out and they handpicked them and said, okay, we want to do a secondary trial on your, uh, your vaccine that you've gotten and we're going to do a non-human primate um, study to, to see how things go. And so they're just going to test it on, on you know, monkeys um, and, uh, and see how, you know, how things pan out. Now they're not looking for a 100% success rate. They're actually only looking for about a 50%, something that shows that it's got some really good potential. And so to give you an idea on the time frame, you know, they said in March 31st, they came out and said that they had, uh, they had five vaccines, different doses, variants of the same thing that they were gonna you know, put into animals and, and, and test for. And obviously there's a, there's a big difference here between animals. You know, we're probably talking like, you know, a mice or, or a cat or you know, something like that. Um, but you know, between that and a human primate, but obviously still, you know, that, that, that's where how things start. So we've got to go off of that. And the good thing about that is, is that of the five vaccines, all five showed uh, good results. All five of them had produced antibodies that, were, that came up in the mucus of these animals. So that's a really good sign. And so that was on the 31st of March. And then uh, on April 21st, they had some preclinical data that was promising. And then on April 31st or 30th, uh, there was some more data that came out, preclinical data that was even more promising. Um, and Vaxart has put both of those updates on their website if you wanna go check them out. So, you know, I mean, it, that's about a month's time frame. Now, obviously we don't know exactly when they started it, so you're, from my understanding, it takes about two weeks for the vaccine to kind of start to process and work and produce antibodies. So you're looking at two weeks from the time at least that they started. And they announced that the Operation Warp Speed was going to take this vaccine on June 26th. So, you know, you're probably at least looking July 26th would be one month. And that would be the absolute soonest that you could even get a, uh, you know, a possible preclinical readout. Although I would assume being that the government's doing it, they're going to keep it under wraps as, as best as they can and not have information just out there that's speculatory. So we're getting close to that date. Today is July 22nd. Um, I'm not necessarily looking for anything to happen between now and, and maybe the next month. I would think within two months of June 26th, so August 26th, that we would hear something about something preclinical or, or whether it worked or, or some type of response. Um, they're just testing one, like I said, of the five, they, they chose their best, best candidate and they sent the, the best one forward from what I, uh, my understanding and what has been said. There's not a lot of information out there and like I said, including there's no time frame information. So one of the things that I like about Vaxart is that, you know, um, they have, you know, a lot of the other vaccines like uh, Pfizer, like I've mentioned, if Pfizer's vaccine fell apart, it wouldn't, the stock's not gonna go to zero because they have a whole company that they have to run and that it was already a large company before this and it's not gonna make or break them. Whereas like, let's say BioNTech, who is, you know, partners with uh, Pfizer, they are going to have a, a significantly larger pullback in the stock uh, if their vaccine was to fail. Now, uh, with Vaxart, Vaxart was a very low, very low market cap stock. And you know, I don't know if it just didn't get a lot of attention or a lot, a lot of promise, but they, they, they've been brought to the light now. People are, are looking at them and they do have a little bit more going for them besides just this one vaccine. They uh, have a norovirus vaccine, which uh, they have, there's actually been a study put out that it costs like 30 billion a year is what it, what it costs the world. So it's obviously a, uh, they think it'd be a $3 billion market cap vaccine if they were able to get a vaccine for the norovirus. And then um, more, more importantly, uh, they have teamed up with Janssen, which is a company from Johnson & Johnson, and that is on a flu vaccine. And so from my understanding, they've already, they've already done trials. Uh, they've, they've already started trials, and they are going to have some results by the end of this year, end of 2020. So 
that uh, you know provides some you know some further you know grounds to gain um, on 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 if the vaccine didn't work out for the COVID-19 and if it did and then also this vaccine you know went forward and, and, and it passed uh, which the preclinical data they even had for that also showed good results so there's a lot of good things that that could come from it and at the same time it's not the only thing they've got going for it although if the virus uh, for the COVID vaccine for the COVID-19 uh, fails some reason they or they, or they say no we, we don't want it uh, it's gonna it's gonna take a large hit. I mean, at the minimum, 50%. At the minimum, um, and, and that doesn't mean that another country couldn't come in and say, hey, you know what, the, the U.S. has got you know plenty of things going on, but but we're still interested. So there's still things that could happen, but you've got to know up front. You know, this was a you know I think a dollar stock months ago, and now it's at uh, 15, 50 or something like that. I got in it at uh, 750, 790, somewhere around there. So you know, I'm 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 comfortable sitting where I'm at. Although if it if it if they deny it, um, I'm going to probably lose. <laughs> so uh, it's definitely risky, worth the risk, maybe high risk, high reward. Um, another way I think that I want to bring up is that uh, they actually have, um, let's see, they have uh, signed up with two other companies. And two other companies, this is something new that's well, and, and I, I just didn't mention it before, this has happened. This was on June 25th. They signed a memorandum of understanding with At Will Medical Solutions. The ticker on that is AMS. And that's a, um, uh, what, that, what, they, what they do, what AMS does, is that they do lyophilization. L-Y-O-P-H-I-L-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N. And that is the process of typically freezing primary dyeing and secondary drying of the vaccine pill. And they can do up to a billion uh, uh, doses a year. So they have been signed up pretty much it looks like to finalize uh, their vaccine. And so that ticker is AMS. So obviously if this vaccine was to go all the way through, these guys are gonna get a nice little uh, check as far as you know processing all of these pills. And then a, uh, another one that they have uh, is that they entered an agreement with, look at it here, Emergent Bio Solutions, EBS is their, is their ticker symbol. And uh, it, it, uh, it, on March 18th, Vaxart announces that it earned, entered into an agreement with Emergent Bio, Bio, Bio Solutions, Emergent Bio Solutions for the development of the manufacturer of the oral coronavirus vaccine. So I apologize, Emergent Bio Solutions, ticker EBS. So that's another company that is tied up with this vaccine that uh, is also going to um, benefit. Now, from my understanding, EBS is a fairly large company and they've already been tied up um, with multiple other vaccines. So that one may be, you know, uh, run up too high, I believe that's, fairly expensive stock right now depending on, on what your budget is as far as buying stocks uh so but but i, I still think that they might be a uh, a good a good look into so two other companies with this one um and uh you know there's a there, there's a lot of things that are that are coming for for them that uh could work out so i, I do like where things are headed i am going to stick this one out and we'll see where it goes so i appreciate you guys listening once again, all the time, I hope that this is informational to you guys. Please, by all means, um, you know, if you have any questions, send me a comment below. Um, I do have a report. If you guys send me a comment, and uh, I will send you a report that I have compiled mostly based off of the company's websites. I do have the URLs for the references that I can uh, that are there so you can go to the actual page and look at it along with some other websites that have their information and then I have added a little uh, a few things too as far as information that I know so it, it just kind of helps you know decode a lot but it, it, it's it's all the vaccines that are kind of major ones there's like 114 vaccines uh, that are being made right now and you know we've gone over maybe uh, not even 10 of the companies so there's a lot out there um, you know so you've got to really you know do your digging find out um, what you think is going to you know work for you I will say this I mentioned in one of my other videos that um, you know one of the things like uh, Merck said that they were going to supply the uh, the, the vaccine for an at cost uh, or for free and so they actually came out today and they said that they were not going to do at cost uh, vaccinations so they are going to sell it at a profit uh, I'm sure it's not going to be a huge markup because of everything that's going on 
Pfizer signed a deal today with the uh, U.S. government for a uh, 100 million vaccines, 1.9 billion with Pfizer and BioNTech. And from my understanding, uh, if, if, if the information is correct, um, the government has paid for that, but they are giving the vaccines out for free. So, you know, so obviously the companies are going to make money, but the government's going to be, you know, paying for it. So that, that's how that's going to work. Uh, so, you know, uh, information develops as we go. Uh, it's been an exciting past two weeks. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for everything. Thank you for listening and take care.